Hello everyone. Uh, last video got kind of cut off. It was uh, cut off short, but I'm going to continue the the theme that I was dealing with last week about how uh, demons actually were activated and formed and took uh, it's they took their uh, place here on earth through the book of the law because the Bible says. I, I go through greater details in this book over Moses' dead body, but it, how? Uh, but sin became exceedingly sinful. So when sin became more exceedingly sinful, then there was uh, there was more branches that took place, you know, that formed up through this root of sin and death. So d the demonic is like a a offspring of sin and death. Does that make sense? And so we, uh, so when sin became more exceedingly sinful, and when the when God pronounces curses, and I I wanted to read that in um, in Deuteronomy twenty eight to get some clarification here it says. Uh, so it says starting uh, in the, I will say in the 58th verse, it says, If thou will not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, that thou mayest fear the glorious and fearful name, thy Lord thy God, then the Lord will make thy plague wonderful and the plague of thy seed even great plagues and a long continuous and sore sickness and uh, of long continuous moreover he will bring upon thee all the diseases of egypt which thou hast uh, was afraid of and they shall cleave unto thee they will attach themselves to you and every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law, then will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. So last time I, I spoke how it's kind of, it, it kind of withers you away. It, it, it condemns sin in the flesh and it kind of eliminates over a period of time. It eliminates uh, flesh here on earth. It's God's justice and judgment being executed on on people who are in rebellion, and that uh, that uh, that curses were pronounced upon people uh, through generational curses. So it, sometimes it's not a, the fault of your own, but we uh, we will uh, we will suffer the sins or the recompense of our father's error or our generational errors in that we adopt the same sins or adopt the same behaviors or the same curses in our own lives that's why it takes the holy spirit to go inside our very uh, vessel and to shine a light in those areas that th that are generationally been passed down to us so that we can stop sin in its tracks. We can stop the curses in its tracks. So like I was mentioning last time, the uh, that everything that God makes is alive. Mm -hmm. And so we can see this even within our natural realm that micro or, well, microorganisms are created, are created in our environment, you know, to... Uh, to do its perfect work in us, we got bacteria, we've got viruses, we've got microorganisms, we've got all these little little mites and bugs and things that are, are they're working in their faculties to be able to some of some of these things are uh, are a a um, like a disinfectant or they what they do they clean the earth they we've got like cockroaches and different. Uh, you know shellfish that are act, act, actually scavengers that actually their job is to uh, clean the waste in the earth so you know without getting into many details there's a lot of things that God has created for a purpose 
and and some of them is to eliminate waste to to clean up and to and so we're not to eat them or to ingest them we're not to to put them in our bodies because they were created to uh to for a particular job and a lot and a lot of them are scavengers that clean up the waste of the earth and we don't want that waste inside our bodies that's why god gives us instructions in the word of god what is clean and unclean because there's things that are considered animals that are considered unclean that can be detrimental to our bodies that can bring sickness and disease into our bodies because they were not meant for food but they were meant to clean and 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 eliminate the waste that was in the earth and and to just and to destroy the uh the all the bacterias and viruses and and there and to uh to support man here on earth everything that was created in the earth is to support man and this ecosystem mm -hmm. to keep it in check and keep it running smoothly so that we can live an abundant life but but because of this uh, rebellion because of this disobedience because men's heart it are is bent to do evil and god god uh uh, allow sin and death to reign and there was justice and judgment throughout the centuries throughout time but now God was going to judge people individually people now were going to be responsible it's not going to be a corporate uh, elimination of sin like like the flood kind of wiped out the whole earth wiped out it's, a, it's, it's you know it wiped out every man and, uh, except Noah and his sons and his, their wives. So they God eliminated all flesh from the earth. Now we also see Sodom and Gomorrah and we see the five cities that were also were overthrown and, and destroyed with a, a fire and brimstone and, and you know, made a wasteland of, of salt for, because God was executing justice upon those cities because they were also in rebellion and they also were they had gone too far to be retrieved so there was there's times in God's uh, you know in his uh, wisdom you know he, he he pronounced judgment on Nineveh 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 sorry Nineveh. yeah Nineveh and and he, he but he always had someone come and preach repentance you know he had Jonah come and repeat re, re, you know preach so that people's heart were turned and God repented and he did not destroy the city so in God's mercy and justice he's always um, warning man and and trying to get man to see the heirs of their way and turn to the turn to him in righteousness but he knows without the spirit of god uh, abiding in them without the blood of yeshua being imparted uh, to them where this nature change could take effect there's no way that that man will submit by nature to the laws of god mm -hmm. They will always want, they will always stray away and go their own way and do their own will. And the Bible says that in, I believe in the Psalms, it says there's, there's, there seems a, there seems, let me look that up. There's a way to man that seems right, but the end it is destruction. So, you know, and the Bible says, and I think in Isaiah 58, that, you know, every man has gone astray. And, de and has departed from the Lord. So we, you know, so we need a savior. We need someone to to um, come and and uh, save us from our sins. And but but to show us the right direction, show us the right path. Because in our nature, we we think we're doing right. Mm -hmm. In, in, in our own mind and in, in, in our own perceptions, we think we're, we are doing the right thing. We, we, we don't always see our, the errors of our ways. We don't always see the, uh, the, our, our will is bent to do our, to, to please ourselves. And we're not always looking uh, to please God in everything that we're doing. Our, our, our directions have been skewed. 
And so, the, so it takes the spirit of God to get us back on track. It takes the spirit of God to uh, to show us the that you know where we have gone astray and have done our own way, and and where we're where we feel like we're we're, we're doing right, but on but actually we're doing which is evil. Yeah. And so that's why God what during the time. Of, of of the curses when God pronounced the curses over and the blessings on Mount Gezerim and got and Mount Ebal and he says choose this day whom you will serve choose this day life or death this was a pronouncement and this was saying if because this is spiritual everything God is doing what we can see the Bible says it's temporal. What we cannot see, these things are, yeah, what we can't see, are, these things are eternal. They're spiritual. They cannot be detected by our natural perceptions. This is, so these curses that were being pronounced because this book of the law became alive and it became active. Mm -hmm. And it, and it was to judge man, condemn sin. Nobody gets away with anything. Nobody gets away. We think that everybody, that somehow uh, the sinner gets away, you know, gets, gets away with their sin because we don't see this immediate judgment. And that's not true. We, when we open the door to sin and when we act in sinful behavior, uh, it, it is active with not within our own vessel but is also active within our generations so sin becomes very exceedingly sinful and it activates and it's it's there to wither us out to to eliminate us and it is god's justice without being with his mercy and his justice at the same time because he doesn't judge us right away he gives us time to repent he gives us time to to turn our eyes back to him. He allows these demonic forces and these things to take place in our lives so that we would we would see that sin has taken its its full course in us and it will drive us to him. Does that make sense? It will drive us to to seek after righteousness. It will see we will seek answers. We will seek deliverances. We will seek peace of mind. We, you know, this, the, the, having, uh, you know, having this kind of affliction in our bodies and mind and in our souls when things are not, are not, uh, going, going well for us, then we will, we will, uh, start searching for answers. This is the way God is, is, is leading us to him, to his word. Because we, if you're truly, truly being afflicted, if you're truly one of his, he's going to allow those demonic entities to start to, uh, to afflict your soul. They will harass you. They will, you know, they will uh, afflict you. They will harass you. They will torment you. They, 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 there's so much. We, we lose such peace of mind. Uh-huh. And, and and people who's been in in uh, dealt with oppression, and have dealt with demonic attacks, and ha and has dealt with with the the spiritual side, understand how cruel and how hard and how difficult it is. It takes the the leaning on God. It takes leaning on the Holy Spirit. It takes uh, knowing the what exactly is plaguing you. To, to to expel it we and that takes God and we you can't know what's plaguing you until you get close to God to show you right and if and if we try to what what a lot of people try to do is they'll you they'll medicate it they usually get on drugs or they'll get on alcohol or they'll try to find comfort in sexual relationships and they'll they're trying to find comfort in in staying busy with their jobs and then careers so they're always looking for a way out but if they really kind of settle into and and do it and do an evaluation from within there there's unsettling peace within mm -hmm. and, and there's torment and anxieties and fears that people are trying to escape 
and they're going to the way of the world and pharmacia and medicine and even illegal drugs to find comfort and peace, mm -hmm. to find a way to escape. Because that's what the enemy does. He afflicts the soul. And that's what these demonic forces are. They are earthbound. They were created and, uh, and formed up in the earth. They're, they're not on the other, other divide. Like, like they're not, they're in the spirit realm. We're not, in, we can't see them, but they're soul dwellers. They're pneumatic, they're breasts. So they get in, inside the soul. But the Bible says when they are expelled, they walk to and fro in the earth they're you know they walk to you know to to find that habitation that they can uh be that they can get a uh, reside in because they know that they they know they don't want to go to outer darkness right. so they 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 so they walk uh, and and you know and, and amongst us in the unseen you know in the unseen where we can't see them they're we're not they're not visible to the eye like those micro Organisms are not my, uh, they can, they're not visible to the eye, but they're there. And when we open up the door to the demonic to a certain sin or a certain pathway, they will, they will attach to that sin. Or if we, or if we had sexual relationship with someone fornicated, or even with our spouse or someone that is, uh, you know, they transfer these spirits, you know, they're, you know, because they are. They are, uh, they get into your soul and they transfer one from another through soul ties and soul uh, dwelling. And, and, and so blood is this transference of spirits and semen and, and sexual relationships also is a way of transferring souls and spirits and demonic to one another. So we see, so we, we're so inundated with the, with the, the spirit, the spirits that kind of plague us and then we wonder why we are weak and we're feeble and we're sick and we're and we're so downcast and we're and we're so anxiety stricken because we have this this constantly energy that is coming from the demonic realm that is trying to uh, get into our flesh and you know in my experience it, it took it took them turning on me. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I was the type of person that was very fearful of the supernatural, very fearful of the demonic. I didn't want nothing to do with it. You know, even though you and, you know, you know, you and dad, uh, uh, you know, you know, helped deliver people and, and you seen, you worked in the supernatural, you worked in, in this realm. I was always, I always, you know, withdrew myself from that type because I was always fearful. I didn't want, I, you know, I, from a, from a child, I can remember always having a fear of these things. Uh, and, and I knew, I knew why, because when, when that fear rises up in you, those, those demons of fear and anxiety and all these things that try to plague you, they don't want you to overcome them that you they don't want you to you know to realize this is a spirit that is is that is uh, is uh causing you to feel the way you feel we are spirit beings we should and we shouldn't fear the spirit realm mm -hmm. because we because we're so natural not you know carnally minded and so much on the natural that we when something supernatural happens we we are we we're at all with it number one or we want to resist it and we sure don't want it to manifest in our in 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 our in our own being we don't want it to manifest in us we don't want to even think that we have a spirit that is plaguing us and and so it took uh took a it took them turning on me basically because when god is ready to move upon an individual wants to wants to draw the, the that individual to himself 
when he's he, the Bible says the, that God goes to and fro and he he searches the earth you know his eyes are always in the earth and he is looking for the soul he says I unless the spirit draw them no one can come to the father unless the spirit draws them so when when the spirit is going through the earth and he's drawing people unto God and, and unto themselves uh, then these spirits will you know they will start to uh, start to react in your life mm -hmm. you they may be dormant they may not you may not had any of these issues before you're just living life and all of a sudden I, I you become very anxious very fearful or you become you know the or something uh, that uh, that what uh, something that wasn't normally something you dealt with before now you're dealing with an issue that you never dealt with before mm -hmm. and it's because it, i believe god is arousing those spirits up inside of you to let you know that you need to deal with certain things inside your flesh these things need to be expelled these things need to get rid of you need to start overcoming see part of our overcoming experiences is overcoming the demonic intrusions and influences of the flesh mm -hmm. and and every person that walks the earth anyone who who is clothed in this fleshly garment is going to be demons are going to attract to it any any person that has participated in sin or been born in sin and iniquity are going are going to have personality and uh, attributes and and a nature that is demonized mm -hmm. that needs to be dealt with and, and and a demon usually a demonic spirit is it is ruling that certain part of your life and these are the this is why the the light of the glorious gospel is shined upon you so that you can see where the demonic is it has is is rooted in your life in your flesh so you can start uprooting that the bible says that the axe is laid at the root so god took me on a journey say a couple of journeys in my life through fasting and prayer because i was being afflicted and harassed uh, and he started showing me where generationally and where i have opened doors to sin generational curses and says and i started had to purge myself from these demonic intrusions and influences and and it doesn't it wasn't it didn't make me not a christian it did not make me not a believer but god was he was purging my soul from sin he was pur purging my soul from the curses he was purging my soul from the demonic intrusions that 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 were invading my life so that i could obtain this abundant life that he promised us he probably he says i come to give you life and life more abundantly so this is the purpose and you can't have an abundant life if, i mean to really have this freedom in god until you start to recognize that you have de demonic in uh influences and these demonic influences have to be eliminated from the soul, from the flesh, so that you can receive. See, they, they, they block us from the supernatural. They block us from ob obtaining this abundant life we have in God. Mm -hmm. And they try to war with us and afflict our soul. And, and, and only when God shines that light of his glorious gospel on those things in your soul and all and you start to deal with them then and when you start to expel them through the help of the holy spirit but the holy spirit has to grow up inside of you he's got to enlarge he's got to expand in your borders so that those spirits can be be uh be expelled but we we take we always take the side of the uh the movies and how they depict the spirit realm and we so we uh, have a tendency humanity has a tendency to be fearful of those things when god has given us power through his blood and through the working of the holy spirit to overcome them mm -hmm. 
and we should not fear them, but we should take the opportunity to get rid of things. If I am feeling plagued, if I'm feeling afflicted, even t today or even now, and I, you know, I feel like the Lord has done a lot in my life, showed me a lot. I feel like I have this good prayer life with God. I, I read the word, but there's times where I'm still, I'm still afflicted. I, I'm still burned down. I'm still, you know, I'm warring in my soul. Um, you know, I'm having trouble sleeping or if I'm having trouble, uh, you know, with anxiety, when I'm having trouble with fear. Well, you know, I, when I get a, a an overwhelming feeling that comes upon me just without any, without any, no reason at all, I just get an overwhelming feeling, then I know that's a spirit that is God in that I need to deal with. And I usually go to prayer and I start, I start asking the Spirit of God to show me exactly where I need to repent. I, where, where these hang-ups are in my life where, and, and what exactly is this demon that has got me, that has got me all, uh, you know, uh, stricken in the flesh. You know, where, what is this that is warring in my soul? I need to get rid of it. You know, I'm. You know, my my mind is not at peace. My my uh, my. Uh, there's disturbances in my life. You know, there's a there's a there's a war going on, and I need to be a, per, a participant in that war to make sure that God, by the Holy Spirit, eliminates anything of the, of, of the enemy that's trying to to destroy that which God is trying to do in my life. Mm -hmm. Because he is at war to destroy God's purpose in your life. He's trying to bring doubt and fear and anxiety. He's trying, he doesn't want any of us walking in victory and walking as overcomers and putting the demonic and putting the, 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 the satanic kingdom under our feet. So he wars with us to, to get us to draw back, to, to, to go start focusing on. Uh, temporal things. Let, start focusing on your work. Go start focusing. Don't focus on your spiritual well-being. Let's start focusing on everything else but your spiritual well-being. And he, what he does is he he puts distractions in your life <laughs> so that you never come to, in terms with what's inside of you, so you can be free from that from that which is plaguing you. So anyways, but it, but it all originated, and like I said, I, I go in more detail in this book, and I break it down. But, you know, just for time's sake, it, because God is, is alive, the, this law was spiritual, but the law was given to administrate the earth. The law was to govern the earth. The law was to govern sinners, the Bible says, and whoremongers and, and rebellious people people that were that were in opposition towards God. Mm -hmm. So the law was put in place to to administrate to keep the righteous separate from the unrighteous and to and to to act within God's mercy and judgment. This is why we must we must come out of the natural because we don't live according to the flesh. We live according to the Spirit. So the law of the Spirit in Christ Jesus, uh, you know, it sets us free from the law of sin and death, which Moses' law and the law of the blessings and the curses, which nobody gets the blessings <laughs> because we're more bent to do evil. So the blessings are never activated, never in operation because we're always dealing with that sin nature that is a keeping us from the blessings. So the blessings actually have been transferred to the spirit realm. And the blessings we obtain in Christ. That then we we activate the blessings through our Messiah Yeshua, not through natural means. Now we may have natural occurrences that God is putting upon us by by uh, by the blessings he bestows on those who are obedient to him 
in his word and in his faithfulness, but it's still a spiritual matter. And they, it still comes from the realm of the kingdom of heaven. It, it is through Christ that we obtain all spiritual blessings. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, because this is a spiritual book and he's dealing with spiritual matters. And we have to understand everything that has been laid out, it's been laid out not only in the natural, but it's been laid out in the spiritual. And so it all has a spiritual connection to it. Because God is, you know, he, he is spirit. Mm -hmm. And he w wants those to worship him in spirit and in truth. So we're not we're not sitting here uh, trying to um, uh, trying to obtain anything in this world carnally. Does that make sense? But we uh, okay. I'm going to read a little bit of this book. Well, let me finish this so that I can. It says, "Then the Lord will make thy plague wonderful, and the plagues of thy seed even great plagues." and long continuous and sore sickness and long continuous moreover he will bring upon thee all the diseases of egypt which thou wast afraid of and they shall cleave unto thee also every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law then will the lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed and ye shall be left few in number, whereas ye were as the stars of heaven for the for multitude, but because thou wouldest not obey the voice of the Lord thy God. And it shall come to pass that as the Lord rejoice over you to do you good and to multiply you, so the <laughs> Lord will rejoice over you to destroy you and bring you not, and he, ye shall be plucked from off the land whether thou goest to possess it so the lord uh put these laws because it was like a, a land treaty <coughs> and so the book of the law was going to govern the land and so they they uh so no one was active policing that correctly we didn't have they didn't have human guards to make sure that you were being compliant to the laws of the land so there was spiritual police officers, which were these demonic forces that were being, be, that were uh, plaguing the people, that would, was plaguing the situation, causing the curses to overtake you, to eliminate you and to expel you from the land. So when we look at the land of Israel, it's synonymous to the promised land, inheritance to the eternal. So everything that is uh, we see in the natural is it has a it has a has a a, a spiritual uh, a a spiritual promised land or is a synonymous to the promised land uh, of the eternal that we cannot see. So these these are lessons for us to learn because uh, God will is not going to allow uh, curses. And he's not going to allow people that are fully demonically uh, influenced, not not fully demonically uh, uh, possesses the 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 it, that walk not not after the spirit. Those who walk after the flesh and that live by the flesh and that live according to the demonic influences and ideologies and and the demonics. Uh, inspiration he is not going to allow them come into the promised land see this is why we have to be transferred into a spiritual being because God is dealing with your spirit and not your flesh he is saving your soul that's different so he's eliminate the demonic the, the the demonic forces and the demonic inspiration and the and the strongholds in your in your uh vessel so that you can obtain the eternal blessings of god the eternal promised land but as long as you're plagued with with the carnal the carnal nature and and where the demonic seems to to reside in and attract to that flesh 
it will not inherit the kingdom of God. The Bible says that flesh and blood will not inherit the kingdom of God because they, they transfer through the blood. So that's why they cannot be part of the spirit realm. Even though we fight in our flesh, we don't live according to our flesh. This is why the new covenant is, is been given to us so that we do not have to walk carnally but spiritually. And now because our spirit man has been raised up and now our soul is being, and so we can be connected to the Holy Spirit and now our soul is being changed and conformed and, and being renewed, then God is dealing with our, 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 our soul as the one that will reside with him forever and ever. It's the saving of our souls. It's our souls that are is being transformed and converted to dwell with him forever. But the, the flesh is going to be eliminated. All together. So this is all. This is what it's all about. So. It said. And among these nations shalt thou find no ease. Neither shall the soles of thy foot has rest. But the Lord shall give thee. There a trembling heart. And a failing eyes. And a sorrow of mine. So they're going to be plagued. And scattered. This, the, the, the diaspora were dispersed into the nations. We're all just, you know, but we're all scattered in our soul. And we have no peace of mind. Mm -hmm. we're, we're all been, we've been breached and double-minded. And so if we've been double-minded, that means a lot of people that are uh, taken on the minds of these demons and taken upon uh, other soul ties through uh, fornication and sexual perversion, they are even more scattered in their mind. And they have no peace of mind. Does that make sense? We have to be, what well, the Bible says, singleness of mind. Let thy eye be single. Not, not scattered. And our eyes got to be fixed on Yeshua. Where we're receiving of the light. And I'm going to get into that in a minute. And it says, uh, so we're, our minds and our hearts and our thoughts and our souls become scattered and we become prey to the demonic realm. Mm -hmm. And it says, and, the, and thy life shall hang in the doubts before thee and thou shalt fear the day and you shall fear day and night and shall have no assurance of life. In the morning thou shalt say, would God if we're even and at even thou shalt say, would God if, if it were morning for the fear of thine heart Wherewith thou shalt fear, and for the sight of thine eyes which thou, which thou shalt see. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again, Misarim, or in the world. Again, with ships by the way where, wherein I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again, and there, shall, and, there ye sh and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. Mm -hmm. You will be sold. See, we look at this all in the natural. We're looking at, yes, uh, Israel did go into captivity. Yes, they were, so, you know, given over to their enemies. Yes, God, we see these things happen in the natural. But we're also taken captive at will by Satan because we participate in sin. And we are being given over to to those officers and to to the just judge and and the judge has to commit us to the prison of sin and and death and we're taken captive at will by 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 Satan when we act and participate in sin it says and the Lord shall bring unto thee and says thou uh, let me go down for there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for a bondman and a bondswoman, and no man shall buy you. No, and that's through the redemption. We have, because we've been sold under sin, whoever yields their men a member to is a servant to sin. So it, we, so it takes the redemption blood. That's why the Bible says in Galatians, 
that Yeshua redeemed us is for as many as of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that continues not in all things which are written in the book of the law. So we are not subject to the law and, and, and abiding and, and keeping ordinance and statutes that pertain to the promised land of the natural. But now we are working and operating in the spirit of the law of Christ Jesus and, and acting within our spirit converting of our spirit and soul and and aligning ourselves with the with the nature of God so that we can inherit the promised land of the spirit not the promised land of the natural so this is what so we're not subject like they were when they when when Moses uh, says you cannot dwell in this land and continue in this land if you're going to live in rebellion against God the, these uh, driving forces, these curses will come upon you and they will drive you out of my land. Because this land was given to the righteous kingdom. Those, the, the land was given to, to the one who is going to be obedient to God. You do not come into the inheritance and, con and continue in sin and, in, and being in defiant rebellion against God. You can't you you can't live in the promised land. You can't, and it's the same today. We can't dwell and expect to go to the promised land of the spirit in defiant rebellion against God, and with these curses and being under the curse. We can't be under that curse anymore. We can't be subject to the laws that have been pronounced here in the earth to deal with sinful, carnal man. We've got to transfer to the kingdom of heaven. We got to get a spiritual mind that is in, in, in alignment with the kingdom of heaven so that we can be accepted in the kingdom of heaven and we can be a, a, a full-fledged citizen of that kingdom mm -hmm. and not the kingdoms of this world or this earth. Because these, these things are all going to be perished away. But it's a higher calling of responsibility. Right. It's a higher calling of responsibility. People want to go back to the law because it's easy. Mm -hmm. It doesn't deal with the sin nature. It doesn't deal with the, 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 uh, the rebellion. You just, you just do, you just do these things and you think that you have this, uh, this, uh, arrogance within the soul that you're doing something that is godly when in all actuality, you're, you're, you are in rebellion to the laws of God. You're in, you're in, div, uh, you're in right <laughs> divine rebellion to the order of God because God has transferred this. To a kingdom of heaven. Uh -huh. and, and the order has to do with the kingdom of heaven. Not the kingdoms of this earth. Because we're subject to one king and lord. Let me go to Hebrews right fast. I think I wrote it down here. It says, for the law having a shadow of good things to come. And not the very image of things can never with those sacrifices which they offer year by year continually make the uh, the comer therefore perfect mm -hmm. we are being made perfect in our soul and mind to when we humble ourselves and we take upon the attributes of 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 a holy god we are being made perfect by the blood of yeshua mm -hmm. and that's that's why it says right here so it says, Cursed is everyone that continued not in all things which were written by the book of the law to do them, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident, for thou shalt live by faith. We can only receive this perfection of soul, this per redeeming of, of, of our soul by the incorruptible seed, and we only inherit it by faith. And the law is not of faith. It's not by what we do. We don't, we can't like uh, uh, you know have scales and, and and put ourselves and weigh out our righteousness against our bad mm -hmm. unrighteousness. It is the conversion of the soul that we're changing. Not I'm not weighing out what I do and don't do 
in accordance to the law or the book of the law because I'm not trying to obtain anything here. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to obtain an eternal inheritance that only deals with me in, in, in the, the things that I can't see. Mm -hmm. the, the, I can't see my wickedness. It takes God to show me my wickedness. I can't see my defiled, rebellion heart. And that works in, in oppositions against God. It takes, it takes him revealing these things. I can't see what plagues me and, and my attitude and, and plagues me in my, in, in my soul that, that God despises and hates unless the glorious light of the gospel shines on it. I can't see it unless God reveals it. And then when he reveals it, then we can together make the changes in accordance to what he has shown me. So if I, if I always looking outwardly and, and evaluating myself on, on, on the, an outward conformity of law, I never see the, the, the darkened, hidden, perverted, corrupt way of the soul. Because I'm more concentrating on the outward than I am on the eternal, on the inner. It, it, it really blocks your vision. Mm -hmm. You're more carnally minded and more like con uh, carnally conscious. You're more sin conscious about the things that are, that are, you're not doing outwardly. Uh, or am I putting the, 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 sh the uh, prayer shawl on? Am I wearing the seed seeds or, or if I'm, uh, if I'm keeping Sabbath right, or am I, am I doing all the things that are required of me by the law, but I never really take an introspection of, of inside and see the wickedness of my heart or the, or the evil that resides inside of me. Because there's a lot of times, a lot of people think they're, that they are doing right. Mm -hmm. That they are, they, that, that the, the, this love gospel, for instance, you know, and, and, and this inclusive gospel showing everybody love and, and having an outward expression of love. So, so never, never tell people the truth, never, uh, never, uh, shine the light of their sin and, and, and never, uh, never give them the full spectrum of the truth. Don't, don't give them the full counsel of God, but only tell them. That uh, that you know everything's going to be okay. God is with you. God 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 sees you where you're at. He He knows your heart, so he, you're accepted. But but there's no conformity. There's no there's no changing. See, it takes the hard it takes the hard road <laughs> to make some changes in your life. It takes going down them hard, hard paths before you will will change your your direction. And if if and if there's sin, and you're being comforted in that sin, and you're taking a back seat to that sin, and you're just being a passive being passive about your sin of someone that is very passivity, they have a passive mindset about certain situations, certain things about people's life, and they're taking a back seat to the to the what is what is being required of God, mm -hmm. what is expected of God, and how God dealt with the, with certain sins, and how God dealt with it, and how He judged His people in that sin, and you don't and you and so you want to make light of those things. And never come and never want to come direct with people because you're afraid that people will be offended and you're afraid that you'll be a, a snare and a stumbling block. And yes, I do believe a word in season must, you must, you must uh, teach the word, you know, in, in the right spirit and in the proper time. I'm not saying go blast people. I don't, I don't see the need for that but but to but when you're when you're teaching on a certain topic you got to give them the full counsel i'm sorry you got to give them the good and the bad people got to make the they got to see they've got to see it all they've got to see the mercy and the severity of god you can't just keep giving god's love and god's mercy without showing his justice and his and his judgments and his wrath it's got to be both so, so people just going around thinking in their minds, 
thinking in the, in their emotions and, and trying to instruct people in in this word and thinking they're doing a good thing because they're showing love they're showing patience they're showing uh they're showing goodness they're they're being they're they're giving they're showing all these their attributes that they have conjured up within their emotions thinking that they're walking in the fruits of the spirit because look i'm love i'm showing love i'm giving and and, and they're and they're and they're doing this act, act uh, the action outwardly but it that, but that's not that's not the fruits of the spirit that God is 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 requiring of us. My emotions and my feelings and what and my perceptions on what is what is goodness and mercy and faithfulness and and patience and long suffering it that it, it doesn't measure up to it the actual Holy Spirit moving in your life that is actually flowing with the attributes of the love, joy, peace, gentleness, kindness, goodness, mercy, and long suffering because God doesn't, he, God is not man. Or does he act or work in the same character as man? So I can't evaluate God's love on the basis of my emotional thought of love mm -hmm. does that make sense mm -hmm. i can't i can't give people goodness and mercy and grace on the, on the on what my perception of what that looks like and, 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 how, and how i feel about it it's in accordance to this word and it's accordance to how the spirit manifests in your life so if the Holy Spirit is actually working and producing fruit in your life and you truly work in and operating in love, you will give the whole counsel of God's word, number one. You would not eliminate truth at the expense of someone's soul. Right. You, you, you will, it is not about if they're offended or gets hurt or they have to go down a, a rough road of changing. We all have to go down the rough road of being conformed to the image of Christ. And then it's not fun. It's, it's not fun. It's, it's hard. It's difficult. It, 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 it's it's depressing at times it's why it, it it's taxing and it weighs heavy on you it's a battle it's a battle and people think that oh oh don't tell people about their sin because i don't because they're they're going through such difficult times and they're having problems in that area but oh we just gotta love them you do no good to that person because when they end up you know, at the end of their life, because you comfort them in your their sin, and you and you secure them in their sin, and then they die and went to a burning hell, because you were trying to show love in your carnal nature, instead of showing the love of God that is trying to to uh, arouse in them the mercy and the severity of god you it's the the beginning of with the fear of god is the beginning of wisdom if you can't fear god's justice and judgment you'll never fear your sin and you sure will not fear hell itself nope. you gotta fear god and not resist him and go down that rough road and realize that sometimes these things that are so hard and so difficult is because you have a demon that resides on, in that sin coming from a generational social door. You know, some kind of something in this world, something has got a hold of you. And now you're going to have to go through the same battles as every believer to eliminate that thing which is plaguing your life. 
so th to me, people that uh, that walk and try to walk in what they think the love of God is, and how we should treat, because sinners, sinners, evaluation of Christians or believers, Bible believers, percept they they perceive them being mean, and they perceive them being unloving because they tell them the truth mm -hmm. because they don't want to deal with themselves so we've got other believers out there and uh, that it has adopted the same mind has adopted the same perception that a bunch of christians are just of unloving uncaring evil wicked people because they because they tell you the truth and they tell you in accordance to this word. And and so they're just and they're not they're not they're not you know, they're not drawing people to Christ. They're not drawing people to Jesus and to Christianity because of their of their ways of of telling people that uh that they're going to hell and 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 what they're doing is in in is in direct rebellion against them and and when they're being challenged with this word and they don't like it because the light is shining up on their their darkness and they don't want to change and somehow it's 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 a boomerang the the one who is giving it the one who's giving the counsel, the one who's giving the, the their way out, giving them the truth, and giving them the, the 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 direction to go and how to how to be free. No, they become their enemies. They become their and and all the people that that align with that that mindset that we are the the, the that we're to to love people. Without telling them the truth, without telling them the full counsel of God's word, they also are aligning themselves with that center, and they are going to be held accountable because you have held back the truth and ungodliness, and you didn't tell the people the truth, and God is going to hold you accountable for not and not saving that that life soul because of your own your own messed up mind of reasoning where we have been so uh we have been we're, we have been so duped and so by by the world's lies we have been we have been so uh, told fables in accordance to how we should treat others, how, what love is all about, what love, how, what it really looks like to love somebody. We, we take the world's, uh, analysis on how, how love should look and what love is all about instead of taking God's word and how he says and what love is really all about in accordance to, because he is love. God is love mm -hmm. and outside of him, there is no love. We live in a world of hate. And that doesn't really care for anybody. And the, the, the love that God has is a sacrificial love. That is willing to sacrifice on your behalf. I'm willing to sacrifice your anger against me. Your hate against me. I'm willing to sacrifice your, your uh, deformation of character. Your slanders that are going to be coming against me I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna endure your hatred but I'm gonna sacrifice a, a sacrifice my love for you to tell you the truth no matter what it's gonna what I'm gonna feel about it or how how it's gonna affect me that sacrificial love that's the love of God I'm I'm going to I'm going to be I'm going to be the the one that is going to tell you both the mercy and the justice of God and the severity and the wrath of God so that you can be saved no know, knowing that you are going to turn around and use it against me <laughs> 
That's the love that God requires for all believers. So anyways, I kind of got off track, but and I, uh, because I want to read this in 2 Corinthians. I'll read that first and then I'll go back to Hebrews. It says, Therefore, uh, let's go. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. See, when these people don't tell them the truth about God's word in its purest form, in its, in its full context, in its full reality, mm -hmm. then you are handling the word with deceit. And you're lying to these people. I don't care if you feel like you're loving them and trying to show them Christ and showing them your perception of love and how Christ should, should act. When you know that something is true and not tell them that it's not true, if you know to do good and not do it, to him that it is sin. That's what the Bible says. It is sin for you not to tell people the truth. It's sin. And you'll be held accountable for it. But by manifestation of the truth, condemning ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. So we, we, uh, we, when we handle the word of God deceitfully and not and not represent it perfectly and, uh, and in its purest form, then we it says we are condemning ourselves because. What does God do? God uses conviction. He uses the sin consciousness to, to, uh, to expose the sin and to convict the sinner of their sin. So if they're, if you, if they're aware of their <laughs> sin and you make, a, uh, you make that known to them and you shine the light of that sin to them and, and they're condemned and convicted in that sin then you've done well because God uses their consciousness, the conscious of sins, the conscious of doing something wrong, the conscious of, uh, of feeling that, that, that weight of sin, knowing that sometimes we just like uh, David and uh, Bathsheba and, and all this that he conspired against Uriah and how Nathan came and, and, and gave him this illustration, you know, and this uh, kind of an illustration of, of, of a person that would do, would do such a thing. And he said, well, well, who would do such a thing? Let that man die. And then, and then what Nathan said, well, you're the man. <laughs> you're the one that did it. And he was pricked at the heart. He didn't even realize that he was doing wrong, that he was outside God's, because he was the king. The king can do whatever they want to. He has power and authority. He has a, all power and authority to every person that is in that kingdom, that is under his rule. But he abused his power. And so he was in, he was in, he was in conflict, or in, 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 and he was in contradiction to a man of God that was supposed to be ruling a kingdom of righteousness. And so God had to expose his deed. God gave him great authority and power, but he abused it. And he was in, and he would, and he, and he done unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. And God had to expose the unrighteousness. So, but it, but it took, someone revealing that unrighteousness and the, and then allowing the sin consciousness letting the 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 conviction of that sin prick his heart so that he could repent he couldn't go back and change the things that he's done but he could get back in right alignment with God he can come back and 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 and, and get his his forgiveness right and be reinstated to him and that's what we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be restating people to God and bringing them into this right, rightful fellowship with Him. We're, we are ministers of reconciliation. We're to bring reconciliation on men's behalf to God. We're His representatives. 
to to bring this this uh to bring you back to the to the right standing to God because we we say well Yeshua does that but we're under Him He is the reconciliator He is the one that does the reconciling but we are the, we are part of His ministry uh, that that also goes into the world and, and tries and and use by His directives to bring people into reconciliation with God the Father through the blood of Yeshua. We are, we are his representative. We are his ministers to do that. And when we, vo when we are a void of that, then we do the word of God deceitfully mm -hmm. because the purpose of our, of, of God's will in us is to reconcile the world to God in Christ Jesus. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. For we, it says, and I'm going to keep going, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus our Lord, and ourselves, you, you, ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. So we are ministers... For Jesus' sake, not for their sake. Mm -hmm. We we represent Christ. We don't represent the sinner. We're to bring tried to bring reconciliation on their behalf to connect them to Yeshua that will reconnect them to the Father. You know, so so what we do as ministers and preachers, we represent the Lord Jesus Christ, not the sinner. Mm -hmm. We are to work on his behalf, not on the sinner's behalf. See, I think we, we people got advice versa. <laughs> we work so, so much on the sinner and not offending the sinner and, and, and coddling the sinner and not and not uh, you know not 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 hurt the sinner in any way. We work more towards the, the, the you know them than we are working towards God and doing His will. And being an instrument for him. To bring the sinner to him. We do a disservice to God when we do that. That's why we need to be in tune with hearing the spirit. So that we would know what, the, what words to say. And what attitude to bring it across. We've got to be in. Because we've got to have that fruit. Right. But that fruit is not by my mental perception of that how I, I should act. It's in accordance to the spirit that gives us this fruit. That is not always what natural man sees as, as being the fruits of God. So because we judge everything on the natural and on, on how we feel and on our perceptions... And what we think how it should look instead of really judging ourselves in accordance to God and his nature. Mm -hmm. And really allowing the Holy Spirit with you know, its essence and fullness and his fruits to really put in us that nature that is, 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 that is outside of this realm. Because his love, his goodness, his mercy, his joy, his peace is we can't really sometimes grasp in the natural mind. Does that make sense? Because I, I, I say that because Miss Wigglesworth was a harsh man, you know, and he when he would, would be used of God, sometimes people took offense to it. And the way he was used of God, sometimes he would be very aggressive with his words and with, uh, and with his handling of the people. So people took a, a harsh offense to him, but he but he got results. He got results. People got healed. People got delivered. And he and he he spoke on many occasions. He says, "I'm not dealing with the human. I'm dealing with that spirit in the human." And so when I'm aggressive, I'm not being trying to be aggressive to the the human. I'm being aggressive to that spirit. So when he would lash and hit the the, the tumor or the cancer. He was, he was hitting that spirit, not the human. 
the, the he just said the human just got in the way of his battle with that that entity see so sometimes the human gets in the way when there is a war and a conflict between what is uh, uh, between the light and darkness between holy and unholy between uh, God what God is doing and what Satan is doing and sometimes we our perception because we have such a carnal perception when you're working and operating and acting in accordance to the Spirit of God sometimes that doesn't look like Smith Wigglesworth it's not going to look like uh, that you know there you know it's not going to look like you are being kind gentle because he's not dealing with the human he was dealing with the spirit that he does not have to be gentle kind and loving too does that make sense yeah he was deal he was in a constant warfare on a different level spiritually does that make sense that he was seeing things in the spirit realm and he was warring in the spirit with the, uh, you know, the, with, you know, with the demonic and the, and the, uh, kingdom of darkness and the human just was, was the byproduct of, of a spiritual battle he was dealing with at the time. And I, I don't think that I know anyone that really actually sees and walks in the spirit to that degree that they can work and operate in the power of God and do the things that he did outside of thinking about the natural realm and how it's going to affect in how and how it's going to be perceived or be you perceived in the natural realm mm -hmm. and how that person's going to affect because the bible says in the last days that you know many are going to be offended and a lot of times a lot of people forsaken their freedom and their deliverance and the and and the uh, truth of God's word because they're highly offended and they can't they will not receive of God they will not receive of the man of God or woman God because it offends them because they don't they want to they want to hear smooth things mm -hmm. things that are easy things are that are easily entreated and if and God is not always deals with us in that manner. That's true. He's dealing with he's he's dealing with secondary things mm -hmm. that's not so easily entreated. So you know we sometimes we have to yell. Sometimes we have to be harsh. Man, sometimes we have to be uh, you know forward in our speech. To get a point across, so that the hearer will hear, and and the, the, because the spirit has got them so bound that they can't hear and they can't receive, so you have to sometimes come in a manner that seems loud and harsh and forward to be able to break through, so that the so that the people who that God wants to receive it can receive it. Because if you come always gently and always with the soft words and, and just try to be so accommodating to the person, they never going to receive what God wants them to receive. God, uh, Paul says, I come with plainness of speech. I think a lot of these deceivers, all these false prophets, all these false teachers, they use elegant words. They use convoluting words. The, the, the message gets so so convoluting and and so uh, you, you don't even walk out re really receiving anything from God. You just and you you go well. What what did the what they say? What did the preacher say? And not anyone could recite it. They have no idea what was just spoken here. They've been sitting under. A teaching or under some kind of preacher or some kind of word for like an hour or two and never walk away actually receiving something that is that is life-changing because every, it's just they're just words 
men's words of wisdom with it, void of the spirit. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it's not plain. It's, it's it, you know, they use, you know, they try to use their intellect and their education and, and, and they want to be puffed up in their own uh, minds that they leave their audience more confused and more bound than trying to just just plainly speak what needs to be said so that people can receive so that they can be free. Mm -hmm. We need more people that will speak the truth without fear, without favor, in plainness of speech, not in this, this convoluting way that it doesn't make any sense to nobody. That people are not learning, they're not growing, they're not maturing. They're not. They're 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 more. They're worse off than what they want, than what they were in the beginning. So, anyways, it says. Uh, so, for we preach not ourselves, but Christ the Lord, and ourselves, ye, uh, your servants, for Jesus' sakes. For God, who commanded the light. To shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts. Remember the light of the glorious gospel. We will be gravitated to that light. Those who wants to expel the darkness. Those who want to get rid of the darkness within. You know God shines his light. But he wants that light to get brighter within. Brighter and brighter. And the only way it gets brighter and brighter within. Is when you expel these forces. That is, a, it has attached to your soul, that's attached to your attitude, that is attached to your mind. That are, that are, that are, uh, that are concealing the light of the glorious gospel. That's concealing God's light to be in really, truly manifested. Because this is the part of the gospel, is to purge your soul from sin and the demonic. So that you will shine brightly in the earth. Yeah. And that you are acting and working and operating according to the fruits of the spirit. And not according to man's perception of what that looks like. And you're not, you're not burning the word down. But you're speaking the word so people can be free. And that they can walk away from you feeling like they have received something. That is going to work in their life. It's gonna, it's gonna be, it's gonna take its full effect in their life. That that they could, that that they could, it's practical, and a practical application that they could apply to their lives. That is what this is what a teacher should do. This is what a teacher should should teach. It says, I said. Uh, to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in in the face of Jesus Christ. So the, let me read that again. For God who has con, uh, commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face, the express image of Christ in his face. We are the, we're the, we're the express image of Christ, but Christ Yeshua is the express image of the Father. And these things are to reflect inside of us. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled. See, a true follower, a true believer, a true, a true servant, someone that is called out to serve on, on the behalf of Yeshua, on his, on his behalf to be his ministers, they're going to be troubled on every side, uh -huh. yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Because they're always in war. They're, they're at war with the kingdom of darkness. Not only in, in, they're at war naturally, they're also at war spiritually. So they're constantly at war, but why? Why God? Why does God allow for ministers to go through such hardship? Why did Paul have a thorn in the flesh? Something that constantly buffeted him to keep him humble. 
because of the revelation he received from God. He didn't, God did not want him to be puffed up in the flesh. But the reason that ministers must go through what they go through and they're and they're and they're being buffeted and challenged and because because you can't receive of the spirit unless carnality is dead. Yeah. That's true. And not every person and not every believer is going to endure this 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 feat of death. And the only way you can die is to be afflicted. I mean, you don't know that something is alive until it's challenged, until it's aroused, until it till it raises its ugly head. So so the warfare that is constantly is being being put upon these people is to to destroy the, destroy the carnal nature so that you, God can give them revelation. So he can speak to them. He can get into their minds. He can get into their hearts. You must be challenged. You must go through the death process of dying to this world. I, I have noticed that most ministers that are really called they they don't have much on the exter external they don't have much and, and the more they give up on the external the more power is being developed in their life mm -hmm. the more that is uh being being taken away from them in this life the more they they live l with less in this life the more, see, the more that you, you forsake this life, the more that you allow all this life, even if it's your spouse that decides, hey, I don't want to go with you down this road, and you're willing to, to say, hey, well, you know, I'm still going this direction. I'm still, I, I, you know, I've died to this natural life. You're more than welcome to be with me, but I, my, my pursuits are in God. My pursuits to do His will, and if you can't handle that, if you're not going to be able to go alongside me and deal with the same challenges, then there is no use for you to even be alongside me. I have forsaken this life, but you have forsaken this life to gain the spiritual knowledge it takes to instruct others mm -hmm. more deficient that you are in this life the more spiritually enriched you are and it says that it says we it says always bearing about in the body in the body the dying of the lord jesus that the life also jesus might be made manifested in our bodies so the life of christ is what what god is after okay i've put my spirit in you i put my life in you now we have dealt with the 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 darkness that resides in you we've got the light but i've got to get i have to kill this this body of of death i've got to kill it so that it doesn't it it, it, it doesn't block it doesn't hinder or does it interfere with the light of the glorious gospel or Jesus that is reflecting out of you? The carnal must not rise its head. It must not, it must never come to surface. When God starts using you, it must be totally eliminated. Mm -hmm. Or you'll never see God work in your life in a magnificent, mighty way. You'll never get revelation. You'll never get wisdom. You'll never get knowledge that is uh, worthy, that is beneficial, that that you that is treasured, that you was that that you will sell the farm to have it. That it's a pearl of great price that you will that you'll buy it and sell it not 
Do you see? You won't get these treasures in your life until that body is dead. And when that body's dead, then it doesn't matter if other people are offended. Doesn't matter what the what happens on the external and the occurrences of that because your body's dead. Mm -hmm. But those, so the reason God selects people to do this, it says that that the life of Christ may be manifested, for which we live always delivering unto death for your sake, for Jesus' sake. I do this for Jesus' sake, that the life also Jesus also of Jesus might be manifested in my mortal flesh. So I'm just this house, this temple. I'm just I'm flesh, but there's no impurities in that flesh. There's, you know, I'm just, and so that the light illuminates from within. Mm -hmm. But that darkness, that defilement, those intrusion, demonic intrusions, they, they, they're nowhere to be found. It's, it's been, everything's been purged out. So I'm just a, a, a covered vessel with the light of the glorious gospel shining in me. So Jesus Christ, Yeshua, may manifest his, his, himself inside of me so I can express him in the earth. Mm -hmm. that, that is the goal of the gospel. It says, for we which live all are always delivered. I'm always delivered. Paul says, I'm always delivered to death. I'm afflicting in the flesh. I'm, I'm taking the stripes. I'm taking the beatings. I'm taking the insults. I'm, I'm, I'm being ostracized. I'm, I'm being thrown in prison. I'm being condemned in the flesh. My body is always, Satan's always at work trying to destroy my flesh. I'm always put up on, on that offering of death. Not for my sake. Not for my sake. But for the sake of you that I am delivered mm -hmm. to death. So that I can give you revelation. So I can give impart in you wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. So I can receive from God his word and deliver it to the saints. Because not everyone's going to go through those challenges. God knows that. God knows that. But he doesn't. this isn't about salvation. This is about being effective for the gospel. And not everybody's got it within them to die at that extent. To be able to be persecuted to that extent. To be delivered day after day. And put on that altar day by day. It's once to die. You know. And go to heaven. It's once to be persecuted. It's once to you know. To be delivered unto death. But to be continuously delivered unto death. Every day. For not for my sake. But for your sake. That I am delivered up to death. I, I'm not doing it for myself. And God's not allowing this to happen for myself so I can retain all this knowledge for myself. But I'm going through what I'm going through for not for my sake or for Jesus' sake because I can, hey, I can shine without even open my mouth. I, 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 can, I, can, I, can, I can receive all the glory of God within this temple. I have this best relationship with God. I can have this wonderful time with God and not even think about you. Think about my fellow man. Think about the sinner on the street. Think about getting the word, the truth of God's word out. But because I love you, mm -hmm. because I love the sinner, because I love, I want to see your development, because I want to see your growth, because I want to see you mature, because I want to impart wisdom and knowledge and understanding to you, because I want you to be endowed with spiritual blessings, I die daily. I allow the per persecution. I allow the affliction and the, and the warring of my soul so that I can die just a little bit more on your behalf. What man of God is there that would, would, would put their soul on the line 
every day for the sake of you, a rebellious sinner that is probably going to turn on you and turn on the person that is delivering the message. But that message may take its full proper work later on, later on in that person's life, and that person might begin to say, but during that time, he may lash persecution and all kind of vile things on you, unleash all kind of hatred, your direction. Do you see what I mean? Just like, I mean, perfect example is Stephen. Stephen was stoned, but because he did not quiet down and he allowed to go through the stoning process, Paul was saved mm -hmm. by his words and by the anointing that was coming forth out of him and the power of God that worketh in him mm -hmm. was able to save Paul on the road of Damascus. So anyways, it says, let me read this. It says, for we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus is saying that the life also of Jesus might be made manifested in our mortal bodies. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. We have in the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore we speak. Knowing that which, which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise, up, raise us, up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you for all things are for your sake that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. For which caused the Faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, God, Paul's perception was that they were a light affliction, but we know by his testimony that they were not light in our perception of, of going through persecution and difficulty. But he, he saw something far more reaching than this life for our light afflictions which is but for a moment worketh for us a far more excellent exceeding and eternal weight of glory well we look not at the things which are seen but at the things which are not seen for the things which are seen are temporal for the things which are not seen are eternal so we we are definitely going through the things that we go through, not only on to, to endure the sufferings of Christ, to get rid of things that, that bind us, but we want the light of the glorious gospel. We want the light of Yeshua to be manifested in us, and not for our sakes only, but for the sake of others, so that they will see Christ in, in its full in his fullness, working inside of us. But in Hebrews 10, it says, For them would they not have ceased. It says, uh, so, uh, uh, let me see. This. So, can never, okay, so the sacrifices which they offer year by year continually make the comer there unto perfect. For them would they they not have ceased to be offered because that the worshiper once purged shall have no more conscious of sin. But in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sin every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sin. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he says, sacrifices and offerings thou would not, but a body thou hast prepared. And burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast no pleasure. Then say, Lo, I come in the volume of the book, they are written of me, to do thy will, O God. Above when he says, Sacrifices and offering and burnt offerings and offerings for sin, thou wouldest not, neither hath pleasure therein which are offered by the law. Then say he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, the first, that he may establish the second. So he takes away the law of Moses and the sacrificial 
offering uh and this book of the law that pl is plaguing everyone that is is causing us to uh be uh you know to the condemned in the flesh god had taken it away so that the new the new testament could eliminate or the new covenant through the blood of yeshua that uh, the, uh, a sin offering offered once and for all can purge us from sin to destroy sin. That's why the Bible says we, uh, uh, we are no longer under this condemnation or the sin, or are we pled with the conscience of sin? Sin uh, uh, does not have its perfect work in us. We Now we are free from the burden and the wages and the heavy taskmaster that is put is put upon every person that is in sin sin is a heavy weight so it removes this conscious of sin so that we could draw near to god so every priest stand daily to minister and offer so it says for by one offering he hath perfected uh for every them that are sanctified wherefore the holy ghost also is a witness to us for the altar that he hath said before, this is the covenant that I will make with them. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws in their heart and in their minds, and I will write them, and I will write them. And their sin and iniquities, this iniquity that's been resides in us, that that is like I said, the demonic is like an offshoot or an off, it's an offspring of this iniquity that resided that first was in the cherub but that but had grown and developed and it was passed to the hum humanity through adam and eve and it grows and the out and the offspring of iniquity is uh is these demonic forces and through the blood of yeshua the incorruptible seed breaks the strongholds breaks uh, breaks their uh, uh breaks their grip it eliminate he redeemed us with his blood from a sla uh, sl uh, from sl slavery from an evil uh master which is satan and so that's what this is what it's all about he's a, he's a he's a taskmaster sin is a taskmaster and he and he puts us in bondage to sin and then he has an entity that governs that sin. Mm -hmm. And then this is what the blood of Yeshua starts to, to take its perfect work in us to, to break. He redeems us. He rebuys us back. Like I just said in the thing that we're sold to our enemies. We're sold to sin. But then we are redeemed by the blood of Yeshua. And so that he can have his perfect work in us to transfer us. To, to transfer our soul, our nature, our spirit, our, the eternal parts of us into the realm of the spirit where he abides and where he governs and where he rules over. He is our Lord. He's our master. He is the one that rules us. He rules spirit beings. Satan rules carnal flesh. You have to make this transference to the spirit we are no longer condemned. What the Bible says in Romans 8. We're no... Uh, therefore, there, uh, there, uh, there is therefore now no condemnation. We're not condemned in our sin, in our conscience, in our nature within. No more when sin has been eradicated, when, it, when we have been transferred to uh, Yeshua as Lord and master of our life, we, we no longer hold to the condemnation of sin. It, it, that is not who we are anymore. This, that is not, that, we are not under that rule. We're not under that jurisdiction. We're not, no longer under that dominion. We, Yeshua, Jesus has became, has became Lord and Savior of our souls of our spirit of our eternal beings satan will always have carnal flesh 
and, and carnal flesh will die and perish and burn up in the end. It will turn to dust. It'll go back. It will go. What is the Bible says? It, it, the, uh, the body came from the earth and it will go back to the earth. But what we're being saved is the soul. And it says, the, uh, so we're uh, now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, but walk not after the flesh. We don't, we don't, we, we put the body to death so that the life of Jesus Christ, the glorious gospel will shine through us. But after the spirit for the law, of the spirit of life is in Christ. Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death for what the law could not do that it was weak through the flesh. God sending his son and the likeness of sinful flesh to condemn sin in the flesh. It, it stops it. It arrests it. And then it, then it takes, then the, Yeshua's blood starts to take its form in us. And then when it takes its form in us, it starts to condemn that sin in the flesh. And it starts to remove us from that sin nature. And it starts to remove us from the demonic satanic kingdom. Does that make sense? I hope I didn't get off task. So we're no longer under the condemnation of sin. But it's not like one prayer. It's not just one prayer we say and, now, and we have all this happening in our life. It's a process. It's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's through this transformation of soul. Doesn't come immediately. It comes systematically. That's it. It says, this is the covenant which he would write in a heart. And the sin and iniquity, iniquity will I remember no more. Now that where uh, now where remission of thee is, there is no more offering for sin. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiness by the blood of Jesus. We come by his soul, by his nature, by his blood, working in us. By a new and living way, which hath consecrated us through the veil that is his flesh, and having a high priest now that resides and administrates for us, let us draw near a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from evil, from an evil conscience, a sin conscience, and let it be purged. Let that be be cleansed. See, now Satan is no longer our the accuser. He cannot accuse us before God anymore. We don't belong to him anymore. He can't condemn us in our flesh anymore. As long as we're not participating and acting in sin, but we're, but we're going through the we're going through this transformation of soul that sin is eliminated so that this conscious this evil conscious who who I was, I'm not no more. What what Satan tried to put on me in my former years, I'm no longer that person. Or do I act in that in that nature? But I am being changed. And as I'm being changed, all those things that I would would be embarrassed of, all that all those things I would have shame over, all those things that that I want to hide because of you know the humility that it brings, I have no problem with them anymore. Because they're not that. That's not who I am. I'm not embarrassed of my past. I'm not embarrassed of the things that I've done. I'm not embarrassed if someone brought something to my attention about something that happened in my past. I'd be yeah, that, 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 that's what happened. You know, I, because I don't identify with that person. I don't identify with that sin. I'm not that person. So it doesn't shame me. I don't have a conscience of that sin anymore. I don't have a conscience of that person anymore. Does that make sense? So that's kind of how, but as long as we're participating in sin, as long as we're doing sin and we're act, still acting and behaving in that old man, we're going to be ashamed of that man. We're going to be ashamed and we're not going to want to come to the light and we're not going to want our deeds exposed because it, it's, it's humiliating. So as long as you see yourself as that old man and, and, and a, a sinner and doing sinful deeds and behaving in sin and acting in 
in in in your depravity you're never going to want to be revealed you never you're never want you're never want to you want to shun from that that person you're going to you know you're going to hide yourself that's why we live in a world of people that are full they're they're embarrassed they're they're they're, they're full of shame and wickedness even though they do it openly, they still, because sin is so prevalent and is so out there that everyone is performing and acting within their sin, so there is no embarrassment. But, but they, if they get around someone that is holy, they get around someone that is righteous, when they get around godly people, then that shame and that guilt overtakes them. And they don't want to be around that person. They don't want to be uh, uh, come into fellowship or have anything to do with people that are not like them because they don't want to have to be confronted with their or be put to shame in their in their actions and in, in and in their attributes so they don't want to be come into this uh, they don't want to recognize themselves as being mm -hmm. who they really are we no one has to condemn they're condemned already. No one has to say anything as long when the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus shines on people and they're exposed, no one has to say a word. Just them being in the presence of that light will bring them shame and humility and embarrassment and they will want to flee from that light and flee from the person that is emulating that light. And then they make you an enemy because I don't want to come near that light. Because I don't want to deal with my darkness. And I don't want to deal with the embarrassment of my darkness. And you and your presence shine a light on me. And, and it makes me feel. I feel something when I'm around you. I feel embarrassed around you. I feel humiliated around you. I feel unworthy around you. And then it's not you. It's this presence of God working in you that people are feeling, but they but they don't identify that as being God working in you. They identify it as you. You're too good. You you know you just think you're better than everybody. You you know you're just you know you, you look at how you are and how I am, and they they don't want us to be show any kind of comparison. They don't want to see. They don't want people to compare them to you, so they flee from you. Does that make sense? And so they don't. And so they don't understand that it's God working in that person that is emulating the light that is exposing them, and they're and they're receiving it in their conscience, and they're being feeling guilty of their sin. Mm -hmm. So, but when that evil conscience is gone and been purged and washed, then we can draw near to people that are godly. We can draw near to people, you know, there is no inferior, inferior complex anymore residing in you. you. You can draw near to God. You can draw, there is nothing that will, that is in you that you feel ashamed of. Right. You can, you can go about in peace. So let us hold fast to the profession of our faith without wavering and let us consider one another to and provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembly together, uh, but exhorting one another so much more that we see the, the, uh, see the days approaching. For if we sin willfully, that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice of sin. But a certain fearful look, looking for the judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversary. He that despises Mo Moses' law die without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much sore punishment, suppose ye, shall ye be the worthy who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God, and hath counted the blood of the covenant. See, this is why we need to transfer into the new covenant and, and, and take upon the, the 
the the redemption and the the you know, take you know Yeshua bought us with his blood through his sacrifice and we needed to take upon this new uh, covenant relationship that is working with the inner man mm -hmm. because if we if we're if we're trying to go out about it in a different way because this blood is going to get you into the eternal inheritance. It's this blood that is going to get you free from, from the curse of the law. It's, the, it's this blood that is going to, to eradicate the power of the old. Mm -hmm. The old was, was given, it, it was given in a, the old was given to keep sin at bay. It was given to, uh, to, uh, to fence in God's people. And it was given to eliminate flesh and to judge sin in the flesh. But the new covenant and the new law of the Spirit is going to take you into fellowship with God. It's going to take you in right standing, and it's going to take you into into the uh, into where He abides and dwells. Mm -hmm. The blood was it is the pathway into the eternal realm, into the eternal presence of God. We can draw near to God. Now we can come boldly to God in His presence, and where He resides. So the Bible says that it says that they would die, uh, you know, at Moses's law. There was no uh, mercy for uh, intentional sin. All the sacrifices that were given were for unintentional sin. There was no uh, sacrifice for intentional rebellious sin. So on the two or three witnesses, every man died. Those who acted in rebellion towards the law and right in defiant rebellion, like the, the guy that went and picked up sticks on the Sabbath after he was told not to, and they went out and stoned him because he picked up sticks, this because he worked and operated and acted in defiant rebellion against the order and law of God. It was the attitude of the heart. It was his actions. Mm -hmm. He and he didn't accidentally do it. He was <laughs> he did it, no, and he no. and no only and very much aware of it. So it was the intent of the heart. So everything that was done intentionally, murder, adultery, lying, idolatry, everything that was done that was intentionally died the death had the death penalty. Yeah. And on the basis of two or three witnesses. Unless God struck them dead right then and there in their rebellion. But they died. But how so much more will be the punishment if people reject the new covenant yes. and, and want to go back into the old pathways? And that's what people are doing. Yeah, because the Bible says, let me go, let me finish this, and I'll say it says, um, it says, oh, how much sore punishment! So he that despises Moses' law, that rebelled against his law, died uh, without mercy uh, under two or three witnesses. Oh, how much sore punishment! Suppose ye shall be he be he be. The worthy who hath trodden under the foot the Son of God and hath counted the blood, the blood he purchased, so that you could come into the eternal inheritance, the eternal covenant, where, where he allows the eternal spirit to abide in your heart. This is, he makes that pathway open. Wherewith he sanctify an unholy thing and has done despite the spirit of grace. So those who have known and have rejected the way of salvation 
and has and has rejected the sacrifice that he has laid and has given it and has not come to the full understanding of their salvation but has has rejected the the mercy of god because now god uh now god has made a way for rebellious sinners to come into right fellowship they do not have to die the death anymore they're not under the penalty of the law of moses anymore to die under the death penalty for being a rebellious soul but now there is there's been a pathway given to every man rebellious or you know with a, a rebellious soul or rebellious heart want someone that acts in defiant rebellion there is now a way for you to come and receive from god once you turn from your wicked ways because the blood of yeshua and the spirit of grace has administrated that all man can come under under fellowship with him come under become uh, into alignment those who are weak those who are lame those who are are uh, that have uh, defects those who uh that, have, that are different uh, class nationalities every man now has this gift given to them by the spirit of grace to come now your sins can be expunged now your sins can be forgiven now your sins can be washed away because now i have offered you a new covenant that has no that the penalties of the flesh and the penalties that were given in the law of moses are no longer uh under you're no longer under that jurisdiction you're no longer under that condemnation you're no longer under that administration because i'm not dealing with your flesh the flesh has to die so that the life of the spirit can may now be manifested in you my covenant is to resurrect the spirit man so that you can live in the life of the spirit that is that is far more reaching and more responsible than the law of Moses. But those who have known this and have rejected it and went back to Moses, you have trodden underfoot the blood of Yeshua and the Son of God. Yes. Because you have you have you have decided you have decided you have decided that moses trumps yeshua and because you don't understand the spiritual workings that yeshua has has given us and 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 you want to feel righteous and you want to act righteous within your carnal flesh which can never be righteous and you want to and you want to you know live within this the these scales of righteousness and unrighteousness you want it to be revealed outwardly in this carnal realm where where men can see and glorify you in your flesh then you despite the grace of God and you have taken yourself and put yourself back under the law that offers no salvation offers no redemption offers no power of redemption and cannot bring you into the eternal inheritance because you refuse to to come into the spirit of grace it's because they think the way of the jews is the right way yeah and, and it, it says it says that's why the bible says i don't want to be ending here pretty soon it says for the law is the strength I think it's I think it's second Corinthians that's where it is 15 because we are to not be we can't be under both the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10 that they were baptized unto Moses. Mm -hmm. 
They were baptized under the cloud of Moses. They were coming unto, under the uh, Moses as being the Mashiach, the, the administrator of the Melchizedek order. He was ordained by God to, to, to govern them, to house them under his power, under his authority. So he was the, the mediator. He was, the, he was their Mashiach, their Messiah, the, the king and priest over them, the man in charge to cover them. They went under Moses for protection to be fenced under Moses. They were all fenced under Moses. That's why the Pharisees would say, well, we have Moses or we have Abraham as our father. We have Moses as our father because that's where they, how they were fenced in. They were covered under Moses. They were covered under Abraham because these were, these were the men of God the administrators of the Melchizedek order that brought them that that was they were mandated from heaven to house and govern these people to keep them that's why the bible says that John the Baptist being the 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 Kohen Haggadah of the high priest they were baptized unto John cuz John was acting as a kippur as a covering for the people until the Messiah came. God was fencing them in. Mm -hmm. And it says that, that, the, that, that what was before him should become after him. That was before him. Showing that the Melchizedek was before him. He, he was the Levitical. But now is coming back under the rule of the Melchizedek again. And this was in John. So he knew that the Melchizedek was higher a higher order than the Levitical. And he was, because he was the ordained high priest, even though he was not an administrating high priest, he was fencing the people and covering them until Messiah. And he recognized as the Kohen Haggadah, because only the Kohen Haggadah uh, can inspect the lamb. And he identified Yeshua as the Lamb of God mm -hmm. that taketh away the sins of the world. Yes, that yes. made him the a prophet that was greater than any other prophet that ever existed because he recognized who Yeshua was. Mm -hmm. And he prophetically spoke of what he came to do. And that he was going to reestablish the Melchizedek order because the law... And the Levitical order was a tutor. It was secondary. It was permissive to God's will. So, but it says in Second uh, First Corinthians fifteen. Let's see. Uh, it's a mystery. Let's see for. I'm looking for the law, the sin. Really? Maybe it's not here. I'll be looking here. Look up here. For the law is the strength of sin. That's what it says. O oh, death, where thy sting? Let me look. The sting of death is sin. So sin worketh in you, and the wages of sin is death. So sin and death work hand in hand. But it says, and the strength of sin is the law. The book of the law. The strength of sin is the book of the law. That brings in these entities, these curses, these plagues that condemn you in your flesh right. and to go back under the book of the law after god had after yeshua nailed it to the cross after he says by my blood i am redeeming you from this curse of the law i am redeeming you from the 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 the, the strength of sin because sin has a hold on you. Sin has a place in you. Sin, sin resides in you. 
but the law but the law is gives it its jurisdiction gives its dominion gives it its power it governs you the law of moses governs you the book of the law governs that sin and resides in you you have to be eliminated from the all things that are carnal, all things that are fleshly, all things that have to do with this flesh to be able to come into the realm of the spirit. Because as long as you're working even in religion, even in religion, if you're working in your flesh, that's why the Bible says that the flesh cannot please God. If Even if you're anything in your flesh, Satan, Satan has dominion over that. Satan has jurisdiction over that. The strength of the law, the strength of sin is the law. Sin that resides in you. Sin that has been, been, uh, been, uh, uh, been uh, fabricated and, and created into branches of sin because it became exceedingly sinful. And now that sin that has expanded inside of you is strengthened by the jurisdiction pronounced by the book of the law. And you have to nail that book on the cross because it has no more dominion over you. Right. It has no more power over you. You are being transferred from this Moses. I'll read it right there first. It says, Moreover, brethren, I would not have ye ignorant how that all of you of your fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized, come under his covering, under his authority, under his rule, baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. They came into the office of Christ, came into Christ through the land, but they were baptized because Moses held that title. Moses was the, the, the authoritative name, the authoritative man, the one that they were going to reside under. You would either get, you either come into Moses or you come into Christ. You can't have it both ways. You can't have it both ways. It's one or the other. If you do, you despite the spirit of grace. You are working to for an eternal inheritance, not a carnal inheritance. You're working to get into a fellowship with God. Into a close relationship, a close communion with Him. Not... You're not trying to uh, try to preserve anything down here. And when we make this transference, it's saying that law of the book, because the eternal covenant has nothing to do with the book of the law. Everything that had to do with the book of the law had to do with the promised land inheritance. See, because the eternal covenant was broken. The eternal covenant was that that of Abraham was no longer in existence, and so God put them under Moses with the law of Moses. But the book of the law were the curses that were or the blessings that kept them in the land. It was the the administrators of that land. It kept them in compliant with that land. As long as they were in compliant with that land, with that, with those, with the book of the law, and God was very merciful, because many, many times they were not in compliant with it. Many times they did rebel, and God showed mercy and favor, trying to get them to repent. God could have expelled them a long time ago, but shown mercy and mercy and mercy. Uh, finally, it. It, because of their rebellion, because they were not, they were given over to their sinful nature and they could not keep the law and keep themselves away from sin and keep them out of, of the dominion of sin because they couldn't work righteousness to, that was required of them to, to be in that land. 
They had the, the, and so that's why when they said you cannot do it because you're because the promised land is synonymous to the promised land inheritance and by your sin nature you cannot inherit the promised land of the spirit or can you even dwell in the promised land of the natural because the promised land has a righteous king that resides over it and it's a kingdom of righteousness and, it, and it, you can't be righteous when you're sold under sin that's why they couldn't do it because they're they had a wayward heart and a wayward nature that could not be faithful to God And that's why they could not stay in that land. And that's why we need to come under Messiah Yeshua because it's by His grace, by His blood, by His offering, by what He does in us that makes us uh, able to come into the promised land. Not by our works, but by His, his work, His finished work on the cross, by His blood. That is making its way in our lives. That is changing us from glory to glory. That is what's going to make us inhabitants in that land. We need a transfer to the land, to the realm of the spirit. And I'm going to end on that. In Jesus' name, Amen.